Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Joy and I'm the knitter behind Tokes Knits. And this is going to be podcast episode two. Uh, it's been a while. It's been like a month since I filmed. A little bit over a month. And that wasn't the plan originally. I was supposed to have filmed another podcast like two weeks after the first one. But it's been it's been a rough couple of weeks. Um, mostly because of the weather. I've been having really bad seasonal allergies and I've just been a mess and I've been on medication and I didn't want to come on camera sniffling and coughing and sneezing and I don't know if you can tell but I still sound pretty congested so I wanted to wait until I felt a little bit better to film so and also because during this past month that I haven't been feeling well um, I didn't get that much knitting done um, I had like five whips in the previous video that I showed you and I only have one finished object to show you today because yeah I I couldn't get a lot of knitting done and for some reason working with wool and um, also having seasonal allergies it just made I don't know I think the wool made my allergies worse so I couldn't knit as much as I wanted to and I felt like crap so I couldn't knit either way um, but I still have like a new whip I think to show you that you haven't seen before um, so yeah uh, let's just get into it I will start with the finished object which is the one that I told you before that I was gonna have as a finished object and is also my biggest knit to date uh, I've never made anything this intense or this time-consuming before so let me just show you I finished it my new lato sweater it's all done um i think i still have some ends to weave in i don't know if you can see it and there's a stain somewhere here on the bottom i don't know where the stain came from i don't know where i got the stain from or how it happened but when I finished the sweater and I was about to block it, I just noticed that there was a stain. There's a pink stain and I don't know where it came from. And I've tried everything to get it out. I've tried um, vinegar. I've tried Dawn dish soap. Um, I don't know what else to do. If you have any ideas on like what I can use to get the stain off, please let me know. Um, because I'm really scared. I don't want to like mess up the sweater and like have it... Um, all matted up or anything like that so i'm not sure what to do about that um but yeah this is the nolato sweater by Nitonomy, and this is a test knit for her the pattern has been out for i think over a year now but she only had two sizes and i reached out to her and see, to ask her if she was planning to um increase the sizes and she sent me the pattern and like graded it for size 2xl which is the size that i made and it's beautiful it took a very long time and it might have taken me probably over a month um which is unusual for me because i feel like i get through my knits pretty quickly but this one was on the back burner for a while and it just i don't know it, it's i don't know it just was very time consuming for me um but i i think what made it really enjoyable was the yarn that i used which is one of my favorite yarns. It's the Lion brand Fisherman's Wool in the color Natural. And I used 4.5 skeins for this, and I also made it longer. So I think I did one extra cable repeat for this. So it's quite long, but unfortunately, as much as I love this sweater, I can't wear it because it turned out way too big for me. I think it grew even more in the wash um, it didn't grow lengthwise, it grew widthwise a lot more. And the sleeves are just like ridiculously long on me. I don't know what happened. It, it was, I knit it exactly according to pattern, but I think the, the length of the sleeves just really, it lengthened more than I thought it would. It would. Um, so yeah, the, I, it's like my arms are literally drowning <laughs> in this sweater. So I think it's going to end up being a gift knit for somebody 
because there's just no way I can wear this. I can probably wear it around the house, but I'd have to like roll up the sleeves. Um, and I think that's the only issue that I really have with it. The body is pretty big as well. And I just thought that, I don't know, I just never, I didn't imagine that it was going to turn out this big. But, and I don't think the yarn grows that much because I've used this yarn several times now and it doesn't grow that much. So I don't know, I don't know what happened here, but it's beautiful. I mean, I love the stitch definition. I love how the cables turned out and yeah, so modifications, I think I just made it longer. I made one extra cable repeat and for the um, cuffs and the hem and the neckband, I decided to do twisted ribbon instead of the one by one ribbon because I just find that I prefer twisted rib. Um, I don't enjoy making twisted rib, but I don't know. It just gives a more polished finish to me. And yeah, I just prefer it. So the only thing I have to do now is put uh, an elastic in the button band, but uh, an elastic in the neck, neck band. Um, so yeah, and apart from that, it's done, it's perfect. And I don't know. I don't know who is going to get this year yet. Um, initially, I was going to make another mulatto sweater for my stepmom, but she's really allergic to wool, so she can't wear this. Um, so I'm going to have to make her another one in like cotton or something. Uh, so yeah, I don't know who's going to get this. I think I might do like a giveaway of it at, at some point on my Instagram. So anybody who's like a size two XL, you know, if you, if you really want this and you think you're going to get use out of it, make sure you follow me on Instagram because yeah, I think I'm, I think that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. I think I'm going to give this away to somebody on Instagram. Uh, it's never, I haven't worn it. I just wore it once to try it out and that's it. Um, so yeah, that is the Nolato sweater. And I think if you, now that I'm looking at it, I see another stain. It's like a green stain. I don't know where all the stains are coming from. I gotta get that out um, before I give it away. But yeah, I think if you want to buy the pattern, it's going to be out in, um, it's already out, but the 2XL, I think she's going to update the pattern and have this available really soon. So yeah, that's all there is to say about this one. And that's my only finished object. And there's two other, pro there's, I think I, yeah, I talked about five um, whips in my last podcast and there's only two of them that I've worked on. There's the other two. I haven't had any progress at all, so I'm not going to show you that. And that's the Minto sweater and the Massé sweater. The Massé sweater, I decided to use a different yarn for that. So I'm still in the beginning stages. I'm still like doing the short rows and stuff. So I'm not going to show you those two, but I'm going to show you three whips today. Two, I think, no, four whips today. Two from... um the previous podcast and two that you haven't seen before. So let's start with this one. Actually, I could have finished this one. I don't know what happened. Um, I really wanted to finish it before I like filmed this podcast, but I just got too lazy. Like I said, I haven't been feeling my best. So that didn't happen. This is the Frida Genzer. by Afton Strick, and this is size seven, I think. Um, this is my second time making this sweater. The first time I think I made size four, and it turned out kind of too small for me. Um, maybe because I'm using worsted weight yarn instead of iron weight yarn that the pattern calls for. Um, but I think even if I, if I make this again, I'll probably even go for like bulky weight yarn or something, because I think it runs small. And yeah, but I really, really love this sweater. Like I said before in my last podcast, um, it's like my favorite pattern ever because it was my very first cable pattern that I followed. And it's just so simple. I think it's the perfect pattern for beginners, beginner cable knitters. Um, 
yeah, if you've never knit cables before, this is the pattern for you. But you might want to just keep in mind that it does run kind of small. Um, I don't know why. And the neckline also looks kind of small. I'm going for a turtleneck this time around. The last one I made was I just did a folded neckband. Um, so yeah, this is size seven and I just have the neckband and the sleeves to go. So basically you work bottom up and then you um split you split it front and back so you work i think you work the back first and then work the front and then join the shoulders uh using the three needle bind off i think the first one i made i did kitchener stitch but i think i prefer the three needle bind off it's much more it's a neater and yeah i think i prefer it for sure I've always been scared to try the three needle bind off, but I had no idea it was that easy to do. Literally, it was so easy. I think easier than the Kitchener stitch, actually. Um, so yeah, that's the Frida Genzer. And I used uh Nitpick Simply Wool Worsted in the color Wendy for this one. So it's a beigey color. It's like a mixture of like cream and gray to me. Like like it has gray undertones, but it also looks just like beige. Um, so I don't have anything beige. So this is a first for me, but I really, really love it. This is the back. The back looks the exact same as the front. Um, so yeah, this is it. I used, how many skeins have I used? I think, I think I'm going to end up using 6.5 um, hanks of the Simply Wool Worsted. Um, so yeah, it's beautiful pattern, really. Um, I'm not looking forward to knitting the sleeves though, because the first one that I made, it just, uh, the sleeves took me forever. I don't know what it is, but I don't like knitting, um, the moss stitch on like such small circumference, I guess. And also because of the, um, the decreases, because you have to do decreases for the sleeves and the decreases don't always match up. So on the underarm, it just kind of looks a little bit wonky. Um, but the pattern says that, you know, obviously nobody's going to see it. So um, not to worry about it. But it kind of bothers me a little bit. Um, so, yeah, I don't enjoy the moss stitch, I guess. But everything else was a breeze. This didn't take me that long to do. And it's quite long. I don't think I made any modifications so far. No, I didn't. Um, I knit it exactly to pattern. Yeah, so I didn't do any modifications. And I think I'm supposed to do like a crochet detail on the bottom to stop it from like flaring out and stuff. Um, but yeah, I think this is the pattern that I would recommend to anybody who's starting out with cables. And the yarn is just beautiful. It's a rustic yarn. This is the same, the sweater that I'm wearing right now is the sweater number 15. I showed it in my very first podcast. And this is also a nitpick Simply Wool Worsted in the color Wallace. And I use like 7.5 skeins for this one. So yeah, I think it's taking over from Lion Brands for sure Men's Wool as my favorite yarn now. It's just so beautiful. I don't know. I just, I really, really love it. And it's rustic, but not too rustic, you know? It's not as rustic as the Fisherman's Wool. And so if you have any sensitivity, um, like the one I'm wearing right now, I'm wearing it next to skin and I can feel some like prickliness on my neck a tiny bit, but apart from that, I'm fine. I think the first time I wore it, it felt really itchy, but after like an hour of wearing it, it was fine. Um, but yeah, I think this is a really good yarn. It's affordable. Yeah. I mean, what, what more can I say about it? It's beautiful. So yeah, that is the Frida Genzer. And I put a stitch marker here just so I can tell where the front is because it's still a little bit confusing to me to tell between front and back. So I'm going to have to put a label there when I'm done. Um, I ordered some custom labels that have like my name Tokes Knits on them. So yeah, I'm going to do that. So that's my first whip. I'm going to show you the second one, which you've also seen if you've watched the first podcast
this is sweater number 23 by my favorite things knitwear and this was a really it was kind of like an impulse cast on because i don't know i just i was looking for i just wanted to knit something stuck in that and something that was drop shoulder because i really love drop shoulder constructions and she came out with this pattern and i had some yarn lying around and i was like you know what i'm just gonna cast it on it has no more hair which i think i really really love now um i think going forward i want to use less more hair um i haven't used a lot of more hair so far maybe five or six projects that have more hair um but yeah i think this one there's like two different options there's like this yarn lamana como i think that you can use or you can use knitted for olive heavy merino with mohair and i really want to make another one in that lamana yarn it's kind of expensive so i have to save up for that but yeah it's a drop shoulder construction so yeah i don't know if you can see that i really love the shoulder detail it's just stunning and for the sleeves you have to do short rows before and it's the exact same construction as sweater number 11 which i've made before and that one does have more hair so if you've made sweater number 11 i feel like it's the same exact pattern um yeah the only difference is that this has one by one ribbon and uh this is knit knitted with worsted weight yarn but sweater number 11 is knitted in iron weight yarn i think uh but yeah i can't tell the difference and it's just that this has one by one ribbon and the ribbon is longer so all i have left to do is the neck band and this right sleeve so this is also something i could have finished and i wanted to finish before filming this podcast but it just wasn't happening for me this month so i think by my next podcast these two um the free deck and this one will be um finished objects for sure because i think i can finish this in like a day or two and i can also finish that one in a day or two so yeah um it's pretty simple i think i'm making um size large yeah size large um so hopefully it fits and this is peyton's classic worsted yarn it's 100 percent wool and in the color navy yeah navy so it's a deep navy color i don't know if it's showing properly on the camera um but it's a beautiful color it's really dark and i don't think i have anything in this navy color do i i don't think so this might be my very first navy sweater i think so but yeah that's the sweater number 23 next whip this one i'm really excited about this was also another impulse cast on because i've already made this before and i made it in black and white this is the let me just show you i love it so much so yeah it's still almost done with the body this is the loom sweater by sari nordland i hope i'm saying that right i don't know if it's lemur or loom but i'm just gonna say loom for now um and it is top down color work i just the color work is just so stunning i don't know what it is but after cast after finishing the first one that i made i immediately wanted to cast on another one but i wasn't i felt like i didn't have the right yarn but there was a project that i saw in ravelry that really made me want to make this one um so and it was like kind of like a similar color with the i think she had like a gray for the main color and she had black for the contrast color like this one and yeah i just i just love this so much i still have to fold down the neckband and sew it down so it is work top down and um the color work is pretty easy it's like maybe 50 rows or something 
and then it's going to have color work on the bottom of the sleeves as well um so yeah it's pretty easy there's not i mean the only thing that you really have to do is like short rows but you can like that's optional i didn't do this two sets of short rows one um right after you split for sleeves i think and then one uh before you do the hem so i've just opted not to do the one like right when you split for sleeves and i'm gonna do the one at the hem um i don't know why i think i was just feeling really lazy and i didn't want to do it so i don't think it's gonna affect the fit that much but yeah i'm just gonna do the one at the hem and i just have to finish the body and do the sleeves um so this is also lion brand fisherman's wool and this is my first time using it for color work so and it's just really exceeded my expectations really um i didn't realize that it was gonna look so good now i just now i want to make uh many more color work sweaters in this exact combo so the um main color is lion brand fisherman's wool in oatmeal and the contrast color is just some leftover drops nepal that i had in black and i don't think i have enough to do the sleeve so i might have to just order one more skein of the drops nepal to finish it i have another black yarn that i could use but it's a different kind of black yarn it's not the same yarn weight so i don't really want to use that i think i i think i'm gonna get another drops nepal to finish it off and yeah it's really beautiful i've used two skeins so far so i think i'm gonna get away with three for the or less than three uh because they come in big big skeins so i think i'm gonna use less than three for this and i think i'm making size six yeah size six and it's not turning out as big as i thought it would because yeah the first one i made i think i made size four or five and this one yeah, it's not turning out as big as I wanted it to be. So hopefully blocking will fix that. Hopefully it's gonna be bigger. Um, but so far I just really, really love it. I love the flower detail right there. I don't know if you can see that. Um I don't know. I think my color work is certainly getting better. Um, but I think I do need to work better at like color dominance and stuff um as well as like catching my floats so this is only my maybe third color work sweater so and i have many more planned many many more planned uh but i think this pattern is just it's easy it's there really isn't anything i think if you haven't knit color work before you can definitely make this um so it's making me want to knit another one. I just don't know what combo I would go for. Like I've seen people making like it in like two, in like three to four different colors. And I don't know if I'm as advanced as that yet, but I really want to make another one. I don't know. It's just so addictive. And I think I finished like the color work section in like two days or something because it just went by so fast. And it's knit on, I think, hmm. It's knit on 4.5 millimeter needles for the main body, but for the color work, I think I use five millimeter needles. Yeah, that is my loom sweater by Sari Nordland, and it's not gonna be my last for sure, because I'm definitely gonna make another one of these. Um, I can't wait to finish it. I really hope I can finish this as well before the next podcast so I can wear it and show it to you, you know. Yeah. I can't wait. Yeah, so that's the loom sweater. How many whips so far? Three whips? Okay. So I have my fourth whip. Maybe this podcast won't turn out as long as I thought it would. So maybe we're not going to hit the one hour mark. We'll see. Now this one, hmm. It's a very old whip. It's been languishing in a pile like in a bag for like almost a year now and i think this is actually my very first drop shoulder pattern that i cast on i think so 
This is another sweater number 15 by My Favorite Things Knitwear. It's the very first one that I cast on. And yeah, it's, I don't know what happened, but I just wasn't feeling it. Um, and then I wasn't really happy with my color choice. I was just a bit disappointed um, because, let me show you the yarn also. So this is the yarn. This is Jameson and Smith um, two, two ply something. Yeah, this is a two ply jump away, Jameson and Smith. And this is a random mohair that I got from an Etsy shop that was selling like wound up um, mohair um, cones. And I got like two of this. Um, this is, I'm still on the very first one and I don't know what it is, but I thought the color match was going to be better than this. I don't know if you can see that, but this is way lighter and this is a really dark purple and this is like a vibrant purple. Um, so together, I mean, you can kind of see, um, let me show you. So this is what it's looking like. I feel like the color is not gonna show accurately on camera. Even I've tried taking pictures of this several times and it's just, I don't know, it doesn't look the way it looks in real life on camera, um, but it's grown on me, I think. At first I wasn't really happy with the color choice. I didn't like the way the mohair um, was showing through. Um, but now that I've picked it up again, I think I really, really like it. Um, and like I said, this is my very first drop shoulder pattern and it was my first time like doing like the neckband and like having to like um fold it over and cast off so let me show look at that like it, it looks so wonky i don't even know what happened yeah so i have to take that out and redo it do it all over again but yeah it was my first time and it just didn't look good it doesn't look good, so yeah, I have to fix that. And the actual sweater, I think this is size either medium or large. Um, it's turning out smaller than I thought it was gonna be, but I know it's gonna grow when I wash it, uh, when I block it. So I'm not too concerned about that anyway. Uh, but yeah, this is sweater number fifteen again, which is the same sweater that I'm wearing right now. And yeah, I'm just um, still in the part where I split for sleeves last year. So I just started this back up again. Um, I really want to focus on this and just like work on it alone until it's done because I hate that I have a whip that's been languishing for like a year now. Um, I mean, I've made another sweater number 15. And I think also because... I'm not enjoying the mohair that much. It's not a hunt. It's not mohair and silk. I think it's mo it's mohair and polyamide. I think so. It doesn't mm, feel very smooth on the needles when I'm working on it. Um, I can definitely tell that it has acrylic in it. Um, so I'm not really enjoying that. And this yarn is quite rustic. Um, so I don't know. And I think this is light fingering. So it's not a true fingering yarn. Um, so maybe that's also, because I didn't gauge swatch. So maybe that's why it's turning out smaller than I hoped. But I don't know. I really hope that the color is showing up properly. I don't know. It turned out really beautiful. I don't know what was wrong with me in the beginning. I don't know why I didn't enjoy this. But I just thought the color was really ugly. Um, I thought the color combo was not it at all, but now I'm looking at it, I'm like, what? I think I really like this. So yeah, I gotta finish this before summer starts because I just, I don't think, I don't want to be knitting on a lot of cables in the summertime. So yeah, I want to finish this before it hits like the one year anniversary of me casting it on. Um, so yeah, I mean, I've talked about sweater number 15 in my past podcast and it's also drop shoulder. It has a nice cable detail on the shoulder. I don't know if you can see that. Probably not. 
but yeah it's just an easy simple design and there isn't a lot going on so yeah as long as you can get past the knitting flat in the back and the front just like a regular drop shoulder it's easy peasy um there's there's not really anything to it and so this isn't going to be my second one i think i have another one planned in this yarn the same one that i'm wearing uh yeah because i think i really like it better in worsted weight yarn than in dk weight uh one it goes by much faster and i just i like the thickness of it better because i think it's gonna be a sweater that i can really wear like in the thick of winter you know so yeah sweater number 15 one of my favorite things knitwear another one so i don't know maybe if i cast on another one i won't like bore you and like keep talking about the same pattern over and over again uh but yeah this is gonna get done soon hopefully actually my goal is to finish these four whips before my next podcast so hopefully i can film in another two to three weeks um maybe that's too ambitious of me but i feel like all i have left of those ones are like the other three is like just the sleeves and this one is gonna be the uh, more time consuming one I think because uh, I really want to make it slightly longer like the one I'm wearing so yeah but yeah that's the yarn that's the pattern I'm starting to feel a little bit sick again so I feel like I have to round up the video and yeah I don't have much to talk about anymore I have one acquisition to show you and then we can round up the video so I can go take more medicine because i'm starting to feel kind of stuffed up again so the only acquisition i have is this right here this is cascade 220 in the color I think it's forest green, the code number, color 8267, but I'm pretty sure it's forest green. And yeah, I bought seven skeins of this, seven or eight skeins of this. And I have a project in mind, so I think I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna cast that on before the next podcast, I think. Um, and I bought this from, what did I buy it from, Lovecrafts? Yeah, Lovecrafts. Um, they were having a sale, so I decided to buy it. It's not the cheapest yarn. I think it goes for like $12, I think, per, per hank. Um, but I think I was able to get it for like $10 per hank. Yeah, something like that. Um, and it's going to be my very first time using Cascade 220. I've heard so many good things about it. And I really want to buy more, I think my next loom sweater is going to be in cascade 220 because i think that's the yarn recommended and i'm really interested to see how it's going to work up you like doing color work so yeah this one however is going to be for another sari nordland pattern and that's the sylvia sweater it's a cable pattern worked bottom up and it's a free pattern from when she was i think when she was working with novita knits um so yeah it's a free pattern and i've had the pattern for over a year now and i actually casted this on um, sometime last year like early last year i casted it on using some like lion brand wool easy yarn that i had but i wasn't liking the way it was working up because of all the high acrylic content that i had and i just wasn't enjoying it it just didn't feel nice on the needles so you know it's like one of those like dream knits for me i don't know why i just i love the cable pattern in there um if i can i'll put up a picture of what it looks like um but i'm gonna leave links to everything down below and if you want to go get the pattern i'm gonna leave a link to where you can get it or find it on their website but yeah i think this actually i saw somebody use this exact same yarn for the sweater and i was sold i was just like yeah I have to make that. I don't have a green cable sweater, so that's next on my list. Um, 
yeah, I feel like I'm gonna cast it on right away. So I might cast it on this weekend actually. Um, it's gonna be another like tedious knit, so it's gonna take me a while to finish. Also because it's a free pattern and Novita patterns, like I've read through some of their free patterns, they're not they don't hold your hand at all. So there's a lot you kind of have to figure out on your own. So, <clears throat> so yeah, I don't know. I feel like I'm a little bit scared, I guess, because I've never knit something like that before. You know, all the patterns that I've knit have like, they like state explicitly what you have to do at every point. So this one, I'm just gonna go in with the flow, I guess. But I'm really excited to cast it on. I think it's going to be my last cable sweater for this like season until fall time. Because once I'm done with this, I'm going to start knitting um, summertime stuff. I have, ooh, I have so much planned for the summer. I have like two test knits that I've yet to start. Um, I think I'm going to get the yarn for that really soon. And I have a dress that I want to make um a few tank tops like i just i have so many plans for the summertime which i don't think i'm gonna be able to knit all of them but yeah this one is next on my list and yeah that's the only um acquisition that i have you know like i said before i don't know if this podcast is gonna be like really acquisition heavy and i don't think every podcast is even gonna have acquisitions just because I don't buy yarn that often. And usually when I buy yarn, I have a project in mind for the yarn. Um, I don't just buy yarn to buy yarn, if that makes sense. Like, you know, I don't just see yarn and think, oh, this looks cute. Let me just buy it and have it in my stash. Like, no, that never happens. I don't think that's ever, I don't think I've ever done that. I usually would buy yarn because I have a project planned for it. Even if I'm not about to cast it on right then and there. And, you know, sometimes you might change your mind and use it for another project. But for the most part, I just don't usually buy yarn just to buy yarn. So, yeah, I don't know. I might not have a lot of acquisitions. I think I will have some coming up into the summertime because, like I said, I have a lot of summer plans, summer projects that I want to make. Um, and I also want to make a video, like of like my favorite summer patterns like the ones that I have on my list and share with you guys if you would like to see that but yeah that's pretty much it um I really hope that I start to feel better within the next couple of weeks I mean spring is almost over thank god but I want to film another podcast before summertime starts so I can be done with all these whips that I have right here um yeah I don't know I think yeah I don't I don't think there's yeah I don't think there's anything else that I want to talk about <laughs> I feel like I've been talking for too long um I don't think I don't think this has been an hour yet I don't think so I'm not I'm not really editing these videos a lot you know I'm just trying to like do it in one take and be done with it so I have you know very minimal editing to do um, but I don't know if you can tell in my voice, but my voice is starting to feel very congested again. So yeah, I think I should round off this video and yeah, hopefully I'll be able to film in like two to three weeks and release another podcast. Um, the first podcast, um, has gotten over a thousand views, which is like wild to me. I can't believe that many people have watched the video. Um, so yeah, it's pretty exciting. And I want to keep going. I want to keep showing you my different projects. Like I said before, if you like, if you like to see cable nets and color work and you know texture nets, this is the channel to watch. I think. Um, hopefully, my next video is gonna either be a podcast or the summertime uh, projects that I talked about. So yeah, I think yeah, that is pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. All the links will be down below to where you can find me on Ravelry, on Instagram. Um, and I'm going to link the patterns that I've talked about today as well. So, and the yarn. So make sure you check the description box and 
yeah don't forget to like and subscribe and i will see you in my next podcast or in my next video <laughs> thanks for watching bye